Hey, welcome back to another video for our car uh, application. We're going to add some functions to these lists here in this video. So when I click add a car, I'm going to be able to add it to the list of items. So there's two steps involved. One is we have to create the car, and then two, we have to add it to the list of uh, items that are in the store. And I guess there's a third one, is that we need to associate this uh, item here, this list box, with the actual list that's in the store. So three things to do. All right, well, let's tackle the first thing, is to add the car to the store. So let's go back into our button for managing the new car. So we have a new car. We're going to display it to the screen temporarily. And so I'll take that out for a comment. And then we're going to add a new store. So let's go and uh, create a new store object at the top of our class here. So this form is going to have a store and we'll call it my store. So we've got ourselves an object called my store. Now, when we create the car, we're going to say my store dot add. Oh, let's say go to car list and say add. And then we're going to add the letter C. So now we want to be able to display this car list to the message box or the list box it's called. So this guy here needs to know that it's associated with a store in some way. So I'm going to double click on the form background here and that'll add a new function called form one load. So we're going to have to use a item called a binding source. So I'm going to go back up to where the store was at the very top here. These are like the global variables for the form. And I'm going to create a new item called a binding source. And we'll call this thing the car inventory binding source. So if I can spell it right. And we'll just make him a new generic binding source. I'm also going to have a binding source for the other guy, which is called the cart uh, binding source. Okay, so what do these binding sources do? These are objects that associate a class like store with a control. So here's how they work. You just, it's better to see how they are coded and then you'll understand. So let's say uh, I've got myself the car. Let's see, what was it called? The car inventory binding source. Okay, so that variable there. And I'm going to have its object or its property called data source. I'm going to set that to equal to the uh, my store and I want which list I want the car list okay so we've got ourselves the uh, first item now the item that we're going to bind it to is list underscore inventory so list inventory is the control on the screen and now I want to set his data source let's call uh, data source here and we're going to say that's going to be equal to the car uh, let's see, car inventory binding source. Okay, so now we know that the items are associated. What happens to this list here? I'm going to do list inventory. I want to know what is going to be displayed because there's only one line of text per, um, per item. So what are we going to use? So let's say it's going to be our two string method. So let's put in two string. Let's see, does it need parentheses? There we go. So the step that's missing is when I add an item to the list. We need to tell the uh, binding source that the uh, car has been added. So let's go to what says car inventory binding source and then we're going to do a method called uh, reset bindings. Where is reset bindings? Okay. And now it says here we need to have a value of true or false. So True is for if, it says here, if the data schema has changed. So in other words, you've changed the structure of the list. False if the actual values have only changed. So let's put in the word false because we're not modifying the structure. We're just telling it there's a new item there. So that should uh, tell the binding to reinitialize. So let's see if it works now. Okay, so we make a new Ford Focus again. And let's give him a price and add a car. And there he is. So you can see the two string is giving us the final value. Let's make another car. So let's see, let's do a Chevy and a Corvette and his price. There we go. So now we have a, a new list inventory. 
We could uh, modify a couple of things. Notice the, uh, the text fields, they stay filled. That would be nice. How about if you can reset those to be empty whenever you click create a new car? You could just set the text property to null or an empty string. And also the two string method has uh, make and model all that stuff included. You might want to just uh, modify that so it doesn't have all that text. Also the width of the car inventory is a little bit uh, narrow. So maybe make those cosmetic adjustments and then you'll have yourself a nicer app. We're going to stop here, but in the next video, we'll go to the next part. So if I click on Chevy Corvette and click Add to Cart, it will add a Chevy Corvette over here. And if I click a Focus, it will add the Focus to the list. And so I can buy multiple cars. And then finally, we'll do another video for checkout. So this is a good stopping point here. We've got ourselves the car inventory with the bindings set correctly.